Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Jakiro. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to say, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things, it really helps. And if you want to see more content into the future, please consider clicking the Patreon link down below and going to my Patreon, signing up for coaching, or just supporting me in general for that $5 or $10 a month. It really, really helps because for whatever reason, YouTube has not monetized my channel, so I make absolutely no money for making all this content. So in order to keep up making content, content in the future. If you guys really like it and you want to see more of it, please consider supporting if you can. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump back to the video. So Jakiro is a five position hero, usually support five position, occasionally will be played as a four. Most supports can, you know, switch between four and five, but this is usually a five position hero and occasionally it is played mid. It's getting a little bit more popular here and there, so I might make a mid Jakiro guide in the future, but for now, we're just going to focus on the main way that this hero is played as a five position. So how do we think about Jakiro as a five position? Well, it's a ranged hero, so that's good. A lot of five positions like to be ranged, but it's also a pretty tank tanky ranged hero as well. There's not a lot of heroes that are ranged and also tanky as support, so just keep that in mind. It has a good bit of beef to it. Now, it's not like super tanky. It's not an ogre or anything, but there is a bit of tankiness there to it as well, despite not having that damage block for a melee hero. So, that's kind of how we think about Jakiro in terms of tankiness, but Jakiro is also really, really slow. It's not a very fast hero. It can't get around the map very well, so positioning is very, very important. So despite it having a decent amount of HP, if you get caught out of position, you're very slow. A lot of heroes will kind of get on top of you, do a lot of damage, and take you down. So you do need to be careful with that. But the flip side of that is this hero does a lot of magic damage that slows a lot, does you know movement slow and attack slow. So basically, even though you need to be careful with your positioning, once you get a level or two, you can actually, you know, trade with people very, very well. You don't do a ton of right-click damage, you don't right-click super fast, but you do a lot of movement slow, a lot of damage over time, a lot of attack slow, so you can be very, very effective in that way in the laning stage. Now, later on into the game, this hero does kind of two things. One, it does magic damage, and uh, sometimes eventually pure damage as well. And in an AoE, so it does a lot of AoE damage, and it offers a lot of AoE control with a big, large, long-range AoE stun. That's honestly probably one of the best things about this hero, is it offers this big, large, long-range AoE stun that's very, very good. But the other thing that it offers is a little bit of tower push as well. This hero, for a 5 position, can push towers by himself or with his team very well. It's really, really effective at aiding your team in pushing, so it's very effective in that way. It's not just a team fight hero. It doesn't just do magic damage, but it does a lot of tower push as well. It really helps with that, so keep that in mind. So that's kind of Jakiro in a nutshell. It's actually one of the best 5 positions, I think, to learn because it is a ranged hero. It has a little bit of tank, but you do need to position yourself correctly to not die but you can do a lot of damage in fights, you can push towers pretty well, you can clear waves pretty well, you have a good stun that's from long range, and a, you offer just a lot of different things in team fights. It's a very good all-around hero. But it doesn't offer anything that kind of goes super late into the game because there's no BKB or piercing stun, there's nothing that's like super great later on into the game, um, so it does fall off a little bit, but in general, this can be a great all-around 5 position hero. So now that we understand Jakiro in general, let's jump in and take a look at his abilities. Now that we understand Jakiro in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that kind of good all-around support, that AoE support, but also doing um, a little bit of slow and uh, tower damage and tower sieging as well. So first, we're going to take a look at Dual Breath. This is usually the first ability that you're going to level almost every single game. It's pretty good. It's a pretty straightforward ability. You have a cast range, you see there, and he basically shoots out fire in a kind of arcing motion. So you see there, you kind of shoot out fire in this direction. It hits everything in the AoE in that direction. There's a little bit of an arc there, so you kind of can hit people. Let's put on free spells here. You can hit people at like sort of an angle. You can see that missed the axe right there, but it hit everything in front. So if I kind of angle it this way, I can hit axe with the edge of it as it kind of fans out there, um, like I talked about in that arc. So basically, this is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You hit people with it, and it does burn damage over time. There's also a move slow and an attack slow. So this is a really, really good ability for trading. Now, if you see, I'm level 14 here, but even so, my attack speed is not great. My attack damage is also not very good. I don't even have any items right now, but you think level 1, it's going to be even worse than that. I'm going to attack slower. I'm not going to do very much damage at all. But when you 
you know, dual breath somebody and you can potentially dual breath both the enemies that you're laning against the off lane and the floor position, you can end up trading, especially with your carry, if you both trade really, really well because they're slowed, they can't get away, their attacks are a lot, you know, slower as well. So if they primarily rely on right clicking, um, you can do a lot of damage to them during this dual breath duration. So they're taking a lot of damage, you're clicking them a bunch, it's hard for them to run away from you, so on and so forth. As you put more points into this, it gets even better over time. So this is primarily the laning stage ability that allows you to trade and just be annoying a nuisance in the laning stage now keep in mind though this ability does cost a good bit of mana so although my mana pool now at level 14 is 855 um, this ability costs 140 mana to start and end up ends up being at max level 170 so um, you only can cast this ability a few times in lanes you do need to make sure you're using it um, effectively using it at the right times when you get the most out of it so keep that in mind you're probably going to buy some mangoes or other things like that to help you cast your abilities more in the lane so keep that in mind the next ability here I'm actually going to skip ice, ice path and go to liquid fire because it's a kind of a synergistic ability here with dual breath and that these two abilities are your damage over time um, magic damage abilities that are really really annoying now this one doesn't have a movement slow but it has another attack slow so when you combine dual breath and liquid fire together the enemies attack super slowly so if you're against something like a slardar or anything that relies on right clicks to do a lot of damage or stun or anything like that you're going to be really good with this hero to prevent them from right clicking all that fast now this isn't an ability that is casted like dual breath it's actually a right clicking ability so you can actually click it with e and then left click on an enemy and it shoots out basically a little fire breath a liquid fire like breath that hits the enemy and then does damage over time and uh, decreases their attack speed and all those kinds of things for a short duration so you can see the range is pretty good as well um, so you can shoot a little bit of fire a little ball of fire out there on the axe and he takes damage over time so you can see how you can combine both of these abilities and now that's a good bit of damage especially obviously at max level so it's really really good now the thing to keep in mind about this ability is that it does work on towers so that's why this hero is a good tower seizure because you can basically walk up to a tower click that on the tower now not only is the tower attacking slower it's also taking damage over time you can see that one max liquid fire there hitting the tower did a good amount of damage you can keep repeating it max level it has a very short cooldown uh the first you know first level and it, it's a very long cooldown so you're not going to be using a lot but it is something that you're going to use in lane as well to harass and be annoying because when you have both of these abilities up it can just do a ton of damage now you're you know it's very very hard for the enemy to trade with you you're clicking them the carries clicking them whatever um so on and so forth but again later in the game it's very very good as well for sieging now I'm going to go back to Ice Path here. This is the AoE stun ability. Now it does a little bit of damage as well, but the damage is really kind of just insignificant. It's not really a high damage ability. It just does a little bit of damage to get that damage in there, maybe to do a tick of damage to cancel blink daggers, those kinds of things. But it's not really primarily a damage ability. Now, what it really is, is a long range stun that has an AoE. So you can see, I can cast it kind of like dual breath in a direction, and it shoots out a giant path of ice that stuns everything in its direction. So you can see, I'll do the same thing here. It stuns Axe and the dummy target. You can see I'll also stun the creeps here. Um, you can see the, the range is pretty far. This is a very, very good ability. And it's not just good because of the typical ways that you can think, okay, well, it's a stun, it's pretty long range, it's AoE, those are all good things. But the real thing that this is good for is, like, canceling things that are saves or setting up, you know, being the second ability that you use after a stun or after a Yules or after something like that. Because let's say um, I buy a Yules on this hero, which is fairly standard, it's not something you're going to buy every game as a 5 position, you might not be rich enough to get it, but it's a pretty good ability. What you can do is when someone's chasing you or you're trying to pick somebody off, you can Yules them, and then you can Ice Path, and then when they land, they are instantly stunned. And this is really, really good for setting up on people that maybe are buying Yules themselves, like an Ember, or um, like a Lina, anything, any hero, maybe Marana, that buys Yules, it's actually really bad to buy Yules against Jakiro because you Yules and then Jakiro from pretty long range can just set up a stun on you really easily, really straightforwardly. You can also set up because there is a decent cast animation you can see there. It takes a little while for it to come out, but it's also really, really good as a follow-up stun. And also, not only does it stun that individual target but it pretty much prevents the enemy from coming and trying to save um, that hero that you're stunning or following up that stun with so it's a very very good ability in general and it synergizes well with his ultimate so his ultimate is very similar it's just instead of a stun it's basically aoe damage 
So it has a similar range, and you spit out fire instead of ice, and it just burns everything in that AoE for a very long time. It lasts for a good duration, it does a lot of damage, it's very, very good at clearing creep waves or doing a lot of damage in fights, whether it's like in Chronosphere or any other kind of AoE ability. It's very, very good for team fighting and clearing waves and defending high ground, all of that kind of stuff. So anywhere there's a choke point, this ability is super, super good. And obviously, you can cast this first, then use your ice path, and now the enemy's just stuck in there, and even if... You kind of combo everything together, so we'll refresh here. So you use your ultimate, you do this, you do macro pyre, then you liquid fire. Look at how much damage this axe is taking, and he has a, such a hard time running out of the AoE there, and he just takes damage even while he runs out of the AoE. So it's very, very um, good to synergize all of these spells together. If you get all of them off on a single hero, they will just melt if they don't have BKB. So this is really, really good. Now, I said earlier that... The problem with this hero is he doesn't really scale super well into the late game because he doesn't have anything that pierces BKB, and that is sort of true. He doesn't have anything like a stun, any kind of big ultimate or something that pierces BKB like a Fiend's Grip from um, Bane or anything like that, so it's not great in that sense, but you actually can buy Ags if you get enough money. I know it's kind of a luxury item, especially on a 5 position, but this ends up making his ultimate pure damage. It lasts longer and it pierces spell immunity so even though obviously they can pop bkb they will still take damage from your ultimate and it's pure damage remember um when you have axe so axe is really really good it's not like securing them you know they're not locked down in the uh macro pyre but like i said if there's a choke point if there's somewhere they have to fight like they're going high ground it's very good to have axe um, along with macro pyre and i will also mention briefly not just the axe but also the axe shard because the axe shard is really important it's actually one of the things that may cause this hero to be played mid a little bit more. It kind of basically just adds a second liquid fire, except this time it's a liquid frost. It's basically the ice version of the fire. It's the similar kind of thing. You can shoot it at enemies. You can shoot it at a tower. It does a lot of damage to the tower. Um, it also does a movement slow. Um, there's a max health as damage. There's a lot of different things that allow this ability to be very good. So you can combo this as a right click. If you right click both of these abilities, it will auto cast them. Something I didn't mention about liquid fire, which is really good when you have max abilities. And then you cast this and you cast that. So two auto attacks and look at how much damage that enemy tower is taking. It's just crazy how much damage this can do. Um, and obviously two enemies, if you do liquid uh, fire, if you do liquid frost and dual breath you're just doing a ton of aoe damage a ton of magic damage to them and attack slow moving slow all of that kind of stuff so keep that in mind so those are all of Shakira's abilities really really good a lot of magic damage a great all-around hero kind of offers a ton to team fights just as kind of slow easy to kill easy to gank all these kinds of things doesn't scale super well into the late game um, unless you get items but just keep that in mind a very good hero for a lot of things and especially i think one of the main things you can think of is this hero really really hard counters yule scepters on the enemy so anytime they try to yules and get away you can just path right underneath them so keep that in mind so that's Jakiro. those are his abilities now let's jump into a game and see how he's played so now we're jumping into a replay here of Dubu playing Jakiro, and we can see him doing typical five position support things that's the thing a lot of five position supports they're pretty much what? playing the laning stage in the same way they're just trying to pull they're trying to be aggressive with their carry when possible all these kinds of things but obviously each five position has their own unique style so here we can see that obviously with wraith king going stun first which i believe he did the Jakiro knows, Dubu knows, that he can get very aggressive on a pretty weak OD. OD doesn't really do much level 1, especially with that um, first point in Q. It doesn't really do a lot of damage, um, and it's also not able to be cast very often. So you can see it's super hard for a lot of heroes to trade with this Jakiro level 1. Le level 1 is a very, very good power spike for Jakiro because um, there's not that much they can deal with this attack slow and this movement slow. And when you pair it up with a lot of different carries, if they have any kind of aggressive ability level 1... You can get super aggressive on the lane here. So you can see how he's doing that. Level 1 just kind of running at the OD, running into the face of the enemy, and using um, his dual breath here. Now, I will say, you have to be careful. This isn't the case with every single off lane. Like, this is because it's OD, because he understands the matchups. So obviously, like most um, 5 position you know, roles, most heroes, you have to understand the matchups, when you can get aggressive, when you, um, at what times you could potentially die, so it's not like every single time when you play Jakiro you want to run in, also you need to make sure that you're on the same page with your carry, it's not one of those things that, you know, 
there he was on the same page as his carry. He's talking to his carry. They're playing together. They're going aggressive on the OD. They know OD's weak level one, so on and so forth. But you can't just do that every time because, like I said before, this hero is relatively slow. So if there's a lot of heroes that can get aggressive, even level one, and they can get on top of you, they can potentially kill you even though you are relatively tanky. The other thing to, sh uh, to show you there is obviously he's trying to stop the pull. Pulling is such an uh, important thing in... Uh, lanes as a five position. This is all just normal five position mechanic stuff stopping the pull trying to pull yourself um, All those kinds of things uh, for for your carry to make sure the carry can get as much uh, as possible, but you can also see he's kind of playing fairly up in the face of the enemy so that the Wraith can, can kind of just get free last hits. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, kind of the last thing I wanted to mention about the laning stage here, is you can see after he used his dual breath a couple times, he didn't have very much mana left. Now, his mana has been regenerating over the last couple minutes, but he's just kind of using his abilities sparingly. He's not trying to use his abilities constantly because he knows that if he's not going to be able to get a lot of right clicks in on the enemy, it's not really worth it because you can see he was like two thirds mana. It's basically he can and use this ability three times, honestly. Three times is all you can do with this ability without, you know, popping a mango or popping a clarity, these kinds of things. So just keep that in mind this year. You don't just want to waste all of your mana, you know, in the first level or in the first two levels. You want to be able to kind of sustain, make sure you're able to have some presence in the lane going on because if you just waste all of your mana too early on and you don't buy any mangoes or clarities or anything like this, then you're just going to have a hard time laning later in the game. Um, so you can see how... He ends up saving the Wraith King there. Pretty much if they just don't deal with him, they obviously try to kill the Wraith King. If they don't deal with him with his dual breath and with his liquid fire, it's just it's really hard for them to stay in the lane. So this is just a great example of a strength of Jakiro. He's playing super up in their face. He knows OD's not strong until he gets some levels and gets a hammer and these kinds of things. So he's taking advantage of that by just absolutely destroying them. And this is another timing too. Level 3, when you have two points in dual breath, one point in liquid fire, it is so, so hard for so many... Um, enemy lanes, enemy heroes, enemy combinations to deal with you when you have this level 3 timing. It just does so much damage. It slows so much or so much attack speed slow. If they ever try to do right clicks, it's very, very hard for them to do anything in this lane. So, this is just basically Jakiro, and then from here, you kind of get a little bit weaker. You know, the off lane gets a little bit stronger. You're just going to pull. You're just going to deboard, all these kinds of things. This is just normal support stuff, and level 3 is kind of your last big, big timing. Maybe another level or two when you get a stun, these kinds of things as well, but from here, it's pretty straightforward Forward, pretty simple, but that's just Jakiro. Level 1 and level 3 especially. Well, actually, level 1, level 2, and level 3 um, are very good timings because level 1, a lot of people can't deal with this. Level 2, you get your double combo of Liquid Fire and uh, Dual Breath together. And the level 3, this uh, second level in Dual Breath is just really, really good. So, in any case, that's Jakiro. That's the laning stage for Jakiro. Let's jump ahead to the early mid game and see how he's played after the laning stage. Now, I jumped ahead to 10 minutes. He was kind of rotating earlier. He went top, he went mid, he was participating a little bit, doing normal five position things. But I just want to show you this because this is very, very important. This is something Jakiro does. It's very unique to Jakiro. Is once you get a few levels, you see he has three levels in his liquid fire. He can push lanes very, very well, or uh, in his dual breath, rather. He has three levels in this. So you can push lanes extremely well, and you can kind of siege towers by yourself um, because of this ability and the fact that you can clear the creep waves. So you can see how he just basically takes mid um, so that his mid hero can participate in fights and also because this makes it so that um, towers attack uh, slower it actually is really really good to use your liquid fire when the enemy glyphs the tower because then your creep wave may not even die um, especially once you have a few levels in this so this is just something you're going to want to do on hero in almost every game as a five position you're probably at some point if your mid is playing correctly going to rotate mid either to help mid or to Take the tower um, to defend the tower, these kinds of things. It's just really, really good. This hero is great at defending towers, great at pushing towers, and these kinds of things. You also just saw briefly there, that was a really good example of how to stun from long range in teamfights. He's very good at, you know, canceling uh, snapfires, all, all this kind of stuff, canceling channeled abilities in the back from other supports like we just saw there. So I think this is a great example of how to play Jakiro in the mid game, pushing down towers, defending towers, all these kinds of things. Um, because that is really your strength of the, the strength of this hero. You can defend towers from long range, you can push waves in. And you can also siege towers, siege a lot of tier one towers if the enemy is somewhere else dealing with, you know, other people, dealing with another tower, deal dealing with other cores. You're very independent and very good by yourself um, with this hero. So that's why I think it's another reason why it's a very good hero for newer players to play because you can get a lot of farm. You can do a lot of things on your own like we see here, him here pushing mid again. So that's kind of how to think about Shakiro transitioning from the laning stage into that early portion of the game. 
So I just fast forwarded a little bit here. I just wanted to show you this. Actually, he only casts his ultimate right there. It was just a little bit of a visual glitch. But I just wanted to show you that because it's important to cast your ultimate to, you can clear, honestly, ancients. You can clear a lot of stuff with it, but it's also good to kind of put that in a creep or into a choke point. Another thing to show you there that I wanted to briefly show you is how he casts his stun, almost like an Earthshaker Fissure, to stop enemy heroes from being able to chase and pursue his teammates. It's very important that you can do this on Jakira. You can kind of cast your stun out in a long range, like a Fissure, to just prevent the enemy from being able to chase. Uh, it doesn't even matter necessarily sometimes if you stun them or if you cast it directly on them, as long as you're placing it in their path where they can no longer run. And then... The last thing that I wanted to show you here is this is kind of how you need to think about Jakiro in the mid game if you're not clearing a wave. If you're trying to gank, this is a very good way to gank with Jakiro. Is that you can basically stun from long range, then you use all three of your abilities basically. So you stun them, then you use your dual breath and your liquid fire, and now you basically just get an easy pickoff because early on in the game, from about, you know, like late laning stage, eight minutes to almost like 20 minutes before people get BKBs, before people get Mantas, before people get those items that help them, you know, purge off or get out of your stuns and your magic damage. It's almost impossible for any hero to resist dying, basically, if you cast all three of your abilities on them. Like, they just get pummeled with magic damage, and as long as you have somebody else on your team that's along with you to, like, you know, provide a follow-up stun or a little bit of extra damage, you're going to secure kills if you're able to get all of these abilities off on heroes. Even though that was just a Snapfire support, you can kill almost any hero in the game with this combo. The big thing is that, can you get this off? You have a lot of very slow cast animations. Um, you're a very slow hero in general. It's very hard. To, you're not jumping in and picking people off. But it's, uh, that's why you're not always going to get your abilities off on everybody. But if you can position yourself correctly to get those abilities off in teamfights and be able to be dynamic on the map and actually be effective on the map, then you are going to absolutely be able to dominate um, in the mid portion of the game. So you can see that there. Like, when he casts his abilities, the enemy just has to run away. They can't fight in the macro pyre. They can't fight into that choke point. Um, but it's not always easy to land those stuns, to land the macro pyre, to do those things because of the long cast animations and that kind of stuff. This hero is generally slow. It's just a slow hero. And that's the biggest weakness of it mid-game. But if you're able to be good at it, you're able to be effective, and you're able to get your spells off, you're absolutely going to dominate and crush heroes um, and kill and pick off and all those kinds of things, dominate team fights in the middle portion of the game. So that's kind of Jakiro's mid-game and how to think about him then. So I want to show you this sequence here. They smoked up and they are going to try to take a fight. I believe the um, the Beastmaster actually dies ahead of time. But I wanted to show you this part because this is kind of the weakness of Jakiro. He's very, very slow. So even though, you know, they were kind of smoking together because he took that time to deward, which is not necessarily the, the bad thing to do or a bad thing to do or the wrong decision, is that they basically were able to TP out. Now, they obviously killed three. That was really good. But you can see how he pretty much offered absolutely nothing to the fight. And that's because he's a very slow hero. So that's a little bit of the weakness. But this is the strength. Basically, if you have nothing else to do, if there's no team fight happening, you can position yourself in such a way where you know that you are basically able to push lanes pretty safely. Or even if it's not so safe, the enemy has to come to try to deal with you because you're just a little Jakiro. You're a five position Jakiro and you're pushing lanes basically by yourself. Because you can see he almost killed the full creep wave with one dual breath and a level two liquid fire. If you have a little bit more levels in this or you're allowed to stick around and stay around the creep wave, then you can kill creep waves basically by yourself. And this is really, really what this hero wants to do. It's very effective at doing this. It's just kind of pushing side waves if you're not fighting, if you're not getting pickoffs. The other thing that we can see is when fights do happen, like we see now, if you are in a good position and you are in the right place at the right time, the whole point of this hero is to sit in the back, to stay kind of behind the action, don't let the enemy see really where you are because all of your long range AoE abilities are very, very effective. And if you just run in, even though you're slightly tanky, if people get on top of you, if the enemy gets on top of you, they are going to be able to kill you. So you just have to be careful in that way. So we can see he sits in the back here, he casts his uh, ultimate at kind of at the choke point where the fight is happening. He casts his stun from long range, but then he kind of sits back because he waits for his stuns to come off cooldown. He knows they're very effective, but if he goes in and dies, there's really nothing that he's going to offer to the team fight. Um, so he's just sitting in the back. He's casting his abilities on the enemy carry. He gets his stun off. He gets all of these abilities off, and then he waits for his second round of abilities to come up and then tries to cast them again. This is exactly what you want to be doing. You don't really want to be sitting in front. You don't want to be, other than maybe like you see him poke in the front here really quickly to get off a 
um, liquid fire on the tower. That's kind of the only time you want to be sitting in the front at all, is to get a dual breath off on the tower, or I mean a liquid fire off on the tower, or to be pushing a lane by yourself when no one else is around. Those are the only two times you really want to show yourself or put yourself in any kind of danger. Otherwise, you're sitting in back. This is how you're, you know, you're casting your abilities in choke points. You're trying to get pickoffs or cast your abilities on multiple heroes. All these kinds of things. This is the perfect way to play Jakiro in team fights. And that's actually just how to play Jakiro in general. There's pretty much no other complicated way. Push lanes, you know, maybe cast a liquid fire on a tower and sit back and cast your abilities. Try to get all of your stuns and your, uh, your ultimate and those kinds of things into choke points where the team fight's happening. Otherwise, this is just basically how you play Jakiro. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, a pretty easy and fun hero to learn how to play if you're just getting into Dota 2, especially from the support position. So that's actually my Jakiro guide. Like I said, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'd suggest it for anybody trying to look into get, um, look to getting into Dota or looking to get into five position or needs a five position hero to play that kind of does a lot of different things from range. It's also really good to learn positioning because if you don't position yourself uh, correctly on this hero, you're going to die. You see how Dude was really effective at positioning and he's 1-1-13. One, one, he's only got one death the entire game. So that's my Jakiro guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. Go to my Discord. You can request replay reviews there. You can get involved. Those kinds of things. Every Friday I stream and I even have been playing games with a lot of people from Discord recently as well. So there's that. There's also uh, my Patreon link below. Consider going there, signing up for coaching or donating to allow me to keep doing this into the future um, to support me because I'm not getting any monetization from YouTube or anything like that. So just consider doing that if you can, if you want to see more content in the future. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.